Luke is not my favorite character. I think he's just whiny. And this is a lot of Luke. Luke and Anakin are like the same character. Greetings and hello there, everyone. It's Nooch and the Gerbil and Celiac Sarah. What's up? And by the way, this is awesome because my like or subscribe guy is directly over Gerbil's entire box, so nobody saw what you just did. <laughs> So we, uh, oh, hang on a second. I gotta turn this up too. I'm, I'm having, I'm having issues this morning. So, uh, Sarah, it's really nice to meet you and have you on today. You too. Thanks for having me. So we know that uh, Sarah is in the process of uh, raising new babies. So we're trying to get her mm -hmm. to squeeze in. She woke up early for us. So thank you for doing that. But let's talk, Gerbil. I, you're in charge of discussion, so we're gonna let you're in. The, you're in the middle too, so that's perfect. So, uh, fire away, oh, my friend. Excellent. All right, man, there's so much we could talk about this week. There were some big announcements today, and then there was something new that came yesterday. So let's maybe start with the old and just kind of get through that, and then we can talk a little bit of what we hope that tomorrow, November, what, the 16th brings us, because I think there's a lot of anticipation, uh, some concerns, and uh, hopefully, though, I'm crossing my fingers that it'll all be good. So let's start with the Galactic Legend event that just came this week. And the new galactic currency. What do y'all think about it? Let's go with Sarah because you're new. And yes, I don't please. Know which side you're on, by the way. <laughs> um, I am pleasantly surprised because I I was a little worried that they were gonna like make it proving grounds level hard, especially when we found out that it was gonna launch at the same time as proving grounds and like same cadence and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so I was pleasantly surprised that it actually wasn't too difficult as long as you had the right strategy, like you were, you were pretty much good to go. Um, and then it's just a matter of whether or not, I'm curious what you guys think about this, whether or not you find the refreshing to have value or not. Cause I, I've seen it go both ways. Some people are like, really like, yes, you definitely have to refresh at least one time through. And uh, other people are like, nah, it's not worth it. I, you know, I'm sitting on accounts and I've got four Galactic Legends between two accounts. So, um, and my one with three Galactic Legends is free to play. So I'm obviously not refreshing anything at this point. Mm -hmm. um, I could see where at the top of the game it'd be worth refreshing for the for the people that are big spenders, but it wasn't cheap. Like it was, what was it 2,500 crystals? Let me go. I can't pull it up. It was. No, it's uh, two, 250, I believe. Oh, yeah. two, I added a zero there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, then that's not yeah, bad. Yeah, CG would appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Decimals, whatever. Um, it was it was fine. I don't know. For a player at my level, it felt a little bit like busy work almost. Like, mm -hmm. like did they really add anything of value to the game with that? Or is it just kind of something that they wanted to... And there's nothing wrong with this. They wanted to reward the people that are at the top of the game that have all the Galactic Legends that can afford to refresh it and give them some more stuff. Which is fine with me, it, it, and I agree with you. It wasn't super hard, but at each level seemed to have one little gimmick in there that you had to figure out. Like, oh look, I can stun Ray with Kylo. I didn't mm -hmm. know that the first two times through, so now that I know that, is I'll just stun her and I'm fine, you know. So, um, or oh look, the um, what was the 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 clone sergeant is five, so I got to kill him first. And if I don't do that, everything falls apart. So, um, it was fine. It was fine. I don't know, Gerbil, what do you think? Yeah, I kind of, I, I have seven GLs on my main account now. Ray does not have her ultimate yet. Um, found I didn't really need it, actually. I, I yeah. managed to squeak through, but it took four or five attempts. I think the Ray challenge was the hardest. Um, Slicker just destroyed me a couple times before I figured out, like you said, oh, you can stun him. And I was like, okay, we're going to try to keep that one happening. But um the the GL Leia one, I I I did beat that one the first time, but it definitely like I felt felt some fear in there because that ATST opened up in its first shot and Drogon and R2 and the others lost all protection and were down into the yellow immediately. And I was like, okay, that's an R9 R2. Um mm -hmm. <laughs> That must have been a really big hit. And I was like, okay, one more of those and it's game over already. And and that was my first encounter. Like that was the first battle, first shot. And and I had that immediate terrified moment of, 
wow, like this is going to be impossible. Yeah. And then from there, it just kind of got easier. And by the way, R9, R2 is the next droid they're making up for the game. So <laughs> R9, R2. R9, R2. <laughs> Don't um, think I've seen that one, but okay. So I just got Galactic Legend Leia. She feels like she's got kind of a night sister feel to her. Like I always got stressed out with the night sisters because everybody died around them and then they'd revive. And Leia's got mm -hmm. that thing too. When she launches her ult, it's like, oh, everybody revived. But man, I was dead until that. You know, there's some of that going on with. I just got her ult. I should say like three days ago. So that was a, an interesting experience experience for me. Yeah, I like the event, the final tier. Of her event. Yeah, I like the Ewoks dancing on top of that bunker. Oh I was lord. Like, <laughs> Oh, I should have known. He's actually obsessed. It's yeah. yeah, I'm I'm uh I I get Ewok furry vibes from uh from uh, Dribble sometimes. Should have known. Yeah, not there's anything but, wrong with that, sorry. So <laughs> I think the event, um like like you all have already said, I think it does feel a little bit like busy work in that it's just another potential eight battles mm -hmm. that doesn't really add to any kind of a story there's no real cut scenes or anything to feel nostalgic about uh and but the, the the thing that annoys me actually with it is that it's just another currency and i yeah. i don't know if i got them all or not but i skimmed through just a few moments ago and i think i counted 22 unique currencies and i'm pretty sure that there's probably more than that because that's not including galactic legend light side dark side right, right. i mean that's technically yeah it even it's even called light side currency dark side currency mm -hmm. so that would make 24 um and then if you want to include like the training stuff which i don't but yeah in the stores alone there's at least 22 currencies and that you know that feels like a united nations gathering right <laughs> it's like there's just so much happening in the store and it's getting harder, I think, um, to find stuff. And speaking mm -hmm. of harder to find stuff, I'm encountering a bug. I don't know if you guys have this one that you go to a character and say you need, uh, let's just say, uh, Carbontes and uh, you click on the Carbonti on the character to find it mm -hmm. and it'll, it'll show you that where you can farm it, but it doesn't pop up the store. And so I dump some energy into whatever I'm needing. I get three or four shards. I'm like, okay, just six to go and I'm there. And then I jump over to the store and it's like, well, there it is. And there it is again. And there it is another time. Oh, I haven't and actually so, seen that. No, I'm getting it right no. here. I just pulled it up right here. I've got it, all the currency on the screen right now. So what I've noticed is this bug only works if you have not already visited the store. If you go to the store first and you scroll through, then you go to a character, it won't be there. But if you go to the character first, they won't show up. Uh, okay, so the other day, I can't remember what I was looking for. I was looking for something and it didn't show up in any stores. And I was like, okay, whatever. And I just like farmed it off a of fleet, whatever it was. And then I went to the store and I saw it. And mm -hmm. I thought... That's it? I thought, I was like, oh, my store must have just refreshed. And I like missed it by a couple of, like I looked a couple of minutes earlier or something. Cause it was kind of sort of near that time, but it wasn't right at that time. So now I'm wondering if that's what it was. It could be. So yeah, next time you, if you like force quit the app or, you know, your phone or whatever, you know, you relaunch the game, mm -hmm. check it out. Just see, go to the character, see if it's there. Something you know should be in the store. Um, and then you know, go check the store afterwards because it's it's been pretty pervasive for me like that Pyro every day now. Yeah, uh, uh, especially the Gear Twelve pieces. Are you talking about just like any store or just the um, the GL store? So Shard Shop. <laughs> See, here we go. Names of stores. <laughs> I don't know how many store names do we have. Also, um, I got. I'm scrolling through. So, yeah, so Shard Shop Store. And then guild activity store in particular, because those are where I, you know, get my gear 12 finishing pieces. Like, um, I don't know the names for my gears. I have absolutely no idea what gear pieces are called. Me neither. Uh, I, make them. Okay. I make them up. Are you guys on Apple yeah, I'm like, or I'm on I'm Android like, now. I'm not having this problem at all. I'm on Android too. So iPhone. I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check right now because I'm so curious. I mean, yeah, I, I pulled up two or three so, gear pieces while we're talking and... They're all showing up as far as I can tell. I've got 
I've got furnaces in the shards, but I, I mean, I open the shop first, so maybe that's it. I, I, yeah, I don't know. Okay, so I'm force quitting my game right now. Totally <laughs> shut down. <laughs> and then we're gonna we're gonna test it. We're gonna see what happens. I can do the same thing. Yeah. So what did you all buy? What what did you all buy with your new legend tokens? Which is interesting. They're not calling it a currency, by the way. They're calling mm -hmm. it tokens. Yeah, this I've only got 900. I'm just gonna save them and see what happens. Ooh. Hey, you can get an Omicron with that. Mm -hmm. Good. I bought I bought Omicrons. Um, I think yeah. I'm pretty much going to exclusively use it for Omicrons. Unless I get... Sometimes I get, like, really, really impatient. And I just end up buying everything. Like, if I'm gearing one character, I'm like, this is the last thing I need to do. And it's the last piece. And I'll just do it. Um, I spent... Um, um get three currency on an omicron once because i had 19 of them and i wanted to get it done and grand arena was like two hours away and mm -hmm. I, I actually made a video out of them like don't do this nobody should do this and i did it and it's like man that was really mm -hmm. it was, it's like three it's like three thousand of that it's it's something ridiculous yeah it's yeah. crazy yeah i did that with the the, the guild mark two whatever tokens i think for some kairos it's mm -hmm. like two thousand of those for yeah. five pieces yeah. or something that's another one do not Right, but yeah, it was right for a GAC, and I was like, "Oh yeah," because this was really gonna make all the difference in my entire ten million GP <laughs> account, right? Yeah. And some, but somehow we convince ourselves that it's worth it when, no, it's really not. Okay, I've almost got the game open. I'm gonna have you. So don't open the shops first and go look for the pieces. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. So don't open the shop. Okay. Um, go over the character first. Yeah, I'm gonna go to. Yeah, and we're talking like. Furnaces, Carbantes, like all of it? Yeah, it should be some, something that's pretty common in especially the Gear 12 range because I generally don't okay. search for anything other than that. I'm going to look for Furnaces so, like, I, I just... know that I've got them in the shard shop and I know that I've got them. All right. Go it's, for it. It's still there. I don't know, yeah, dude. Okay. Uh, maybe it's the Great Firewall. It strikes again. <laughs> I have a question. I have a question. So relating to the the new, um, I, I don't know what it's called. What is it called? Ultimate Journey Legend Currency. Isn't, isn't that what? Is that what? It yeah. Is? Um, you know, I, me talking about being busy work and, and you know, I think we all are saying it doesn't really add anything to the game. It's just kind of an extra reward for high level players. Is there anything mm -hmm. they can add to the game at this point? I mean, the only thing we've talked about is vehicles, but you've got you've got guild versus everybody you've got guild versus guild so you got pvp pve for guilds you've got players versus everybody in conquest you got players versus players i mean pvp pve guild ve guild vp is there and do we really want like a whole nother game mode like right now mm -hmm. um it's it is it's time absorbing and i know at the higher levels of guilds that you guys are still in and i i abandoned a while ago because i just couldn't do it you know, you have to be on at certain times and you got to clear that front wall and you've got to use this one team. And man, that's got to be exhausting. But I mean, do we want to see another like vehicle game mode in the game that, that takes 30 minutes a day whenever it's open? Or or do we just, are we good with where it is? I'm, I'm just not sure where we go from here. I would not. It's it's way too time consuming as it is. Like, like you're saying, like this event is busy work. And it's kind of funny because it's the ultimate journey. And I did every tier on auto except for the Kylo one because I wanted to make sure I was stunning Ray. Like I, every other one, I was like auto and I just put my phone down and played with Jasper and then hit auto on the next tier and continued <laughs> playing. Like it didn't feel very ultimate y. It was just another. Yeah, it didn't. Did yeah. Like, let's, let's be real. Yeah. It was it was just another event um and i think if they added another event it would just be too much because even as it is in in our guild we were for a very long time for several months now we have basically been coasting in territory battles because we're like we need something that is not going to impact us if we don't push hard and pushing hard for another star etc wasn't the uh it wasn't going to make or break it in terms of rewards versus uh, output kind of thing. 
Uh, so we're like, let's just chill on TV because we'll, we try in Territory War and everyone's doing Conquest and then you've got GAC, like all, all of this stuff. So we'll just chill. And now with, with Zeppo being a thing, we're like, okay, we've got to actually like do your battles and unlock Zeppo. And we're like, okay, more territory battles and do Conquest and go do everything else and hit the raid and all that kind of stuff. So it is a lot that I I honestly don't know what they could possibly expect from us if they added another event. Yeah, I think to the people who do all of the territory battles, like uh, on each of the planets, I'm like, power to you. Like, I, I can't even bring myself to do more than two or three. Mm -hmm. The ships, uh, I will try to do because it's more points. But then, you know, just constantly hitting the job of raid or mission and all the others, I'm just like, wow, it's so monotonous feeling for so little outcome. You know, when, once my guild unlocked Reva, I, I definitely feel that everybody just said, okay, now we can just get whatever stars we happen to get. Like, I mean, yeah. we're still asking everyone to deploy, but there's not really any, any real incentive to push harder for that next star. With that said, there are a few things I, I would like to see, things I think would be a lot of fun. But I think it would take, for it to be successful, it would take some structural changes to things like Conquest, right? Conquest is just such um, such a lost opportunity or missed opportunity for CG. You know, when we have feats with get 100 Tuscan kills and 40 battles with Ewoks and 40 mm -hmm. battles, you know, I love my furry friends, but come on, that's just excessive. Uh, 40 battles with any squad, it just... It, it forces um, the game to become stale mm -hmm. artificially. Whereas, you know, if even if they scaled back the rewards a bit, but then dropped it down to four battles, five battles, 10 battles, it would even be an improvement. I think people ultimately would be a little bit happier. Now, taking away any kind of reward though is always gonna create um, some mayhem. So what I, what I think they could add if they made these other events a little more or less time consuming and more manageable, I would love to see an inter-guild GAC opportunity um, so that you only battle people in your guild for one week. Maybe even you could offer that during the week off, right? It doesn't change your rankings. Um, it gives you an opportunity to test. So like I'm, I'm pushing out a video on my channel after this uh, about an Akbar team that got three holds and was eventually defeated by Reva in one mission and another one. So like, when, you know, when when I'm forcing my opponents to, to drop Reva to beat Akbar, um, mm -hmm. there's something potentially there. And I want to go in and test it. I want to be able to say to people, hey, this team is a sleeper you might want to look at. But the reality is I have no idea because Akbar's Omi is GAC, Leia's Omi is GAC, and there's no way to play that outside of GAC. And when you're at the Kyber levels, you can't risk going into, I mean, yeah. you can, but it, it works against you to risk something for the fun of your channel or just for the random enjoyment of the game, right? So mm -hmm. I think that having a, a GAC-like environment that doesn't impact your, your standings, like an inter-guild battle, would be fantastic. And it doesn't, you know, a lot of people say they want a sandbox. And I understand why CG is not going to give us that. They don't want us to have unlimited access to testing. But a guild GAC week, for example, would at least give you three opportunities to test, you know, each month mm -hmm. without giving away the whole house and kitchen and everything that comes with it or something, you know? So I think that would be fantastic. Um, I would also, I would love to see a territory war overhaul that makes the game more Star Warsy than just one giant battle. Everyone throw everything and beat forty-eight uh, Rivas in this territory, forty-eight Rays in that territory. I mean, that is just stupid. Mm -hmm. So, like, have either of you ever played uh, Star? What is it? Star Star Trek Fleet Commander or something? I tried it for a week and get and didn't like it. But did did, it, it did you all ever try this? Yeah. I haven't tried it, but yeah. I've seen like videos of it. And... Yeah, so it is a really interesting concept where you you get multiple ships and you can deploy them out to different planets and star systems and then you can manage them individually but they travel in like real time mm -hmm. like it, it like if you say go to this planet it actually might take two days for your ship to get there in real time so it's kind of cool and kind of annoying but like i could picture 
something like the Rise of Empire territory map, that instead of guild versus guild, it becomes maybe five guilds. Oh, and you each start in different territories. Mm -hmm. And you have to use your fleets to breach a planetary defense, then deploy your troops. And only the surviving characters are there for defense. So at the end of the week, whoever has the most territory is the winner. Not, you know, just go kill 48 rays, go kill 48 slickers. So like day one, you know, you set your defenses on your five or so core planets. And then you coordinate with your guild and you're like, hey, you 13 people attack Tatooine, you 14 go after Naboo. You, you know, and at the same time, the other guild may just, I don't know, but I, I could see that just being a lot it, more engaging and tactical and I think did, it's fine. You, did you play Disney's me. Sorcerer's Arena? Briefly. So they have their territory war is a three way guild territory war. And okay. it's sort of the same idea. You have a home base, which is your castle, your Disney castle, and then you have zones that go out from it and it, it forms a triangle. Um, and your zones are all attached to your home base. Um, and essentially what ends up happening is you put squads down as your defense. And it's the same idea. You go and attack another player's base. And it has to be a base that you, one of your bases is touching. So you make like a line yeah. essentially. And then once you uh, take over that base, you defeat all the teams. You have one hour to, to deploy your own teams on it and capture the Ooh. base. Oh, Otherwise... Cool the other Ow. team can take it back it is the most time intensive yeah it is it, it causes such burnout because what ends up happening is your points scored are based off of how many bases you have and they rack up in real time by the minute and then what will end mm. up happening is to score points you need to have a base attached to your castle so the idea is you beeline straight to the back of somebody's base, cut off all three zones that are attached to their castle, and then they get no points, and then you work your way out from there. And because it's a three-way thing, you could theoretically, and this was happening, was if you had an alliance, you could theoretically get into a matchup where there are two alliance guilds and an outsider, and your alliance guilds gang up on the outsider. Um, okay. It was really fun, well, uh, and then you eventually yeah. were like, "I'm a, as an officer, you'd be like, okay, I'm tired. <laughs> I don't want to do yeah. this anymore. Because <laughs> you have to be yeah, online yeah, okay. all the time. I think if they made it so that you had longer than an hour, it would be totally different. Yeah. Um, or like yeah. you're saying, like it's a... your surviving troops that stay there. Because um, then that, that sounds a bit more automated. But the, yeah. the one or hour was crazy. Kind of a... Kind of like a rise of territory war that it takes a couple of days. You send your troops, you make your fleet attacks, you put your ground attacks. Next day, you know, new deployment opportunities can come. And like in my imagination, I can see attaching your squad to a fleet. If the fleet yes. dies, the squad dies. They don't land, right? So that makes the fleet battle come first. Mm -hmm. And then you deploy the troops after it. So I... I think they could be fun, but you bring up a really good point that that the alliances will cause a problem here. Like mm -hmm. my my alt account is in an alliance. Uh, I think it's called Scarif Beach Resort. I got to look it up because it's a mm -hmm. it's a big alliance, um, and it's it's a great alliance that's very very supportive of each of their guilds. But they've got like 16, 17 guilds, so they definitely would in that scenario mat line up with each other. And I think that some of them are going to be cool enough to not team up on the, the third person but uh, let's be honest there will be people going oh bro we got this right? yeah a hundred they would 100%. just smack someone yeah and, yeah you know sir, sure. i play games like that too where it's like they got a, they, they bring out a war game mode but it's live like mm -hmm. and you can you yeah, can literally no. sit on the phone for the entire war and just go over and over and over and over again to make your your guild win or games like that where um if you stay on the game for a longer period of time and do it more, then you end up at the top tier of the people that finish the event and you yeah. get the best rewards. And I, I can't think of a description, but that's that's kind of the only way I can describe it. Like the people that finished first were on their phones for 12 hours straight or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, well, I'm never going to do that because I have people that love me and um, <laughs> and, and I love them too. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, I think it goes to the balance, right? Like 
the, the game has gone through ebbs and flows over eight 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 years this month. Eight years. Mm -hmm. Eight years. Um, Ooh. But they've they've always avoided that, and I think that's been a big part of the of why it's been able to co to continue this long. Is there's nothing in there? There's burnout that's very real, but but honestly, a lot of it it can be self inflicted burnout. You know, like we talk about. Mm -hmm. You know, you you're in a high level guild, and they micromanage the territory wars, and if they don't micromanage, they're going to lose, and that's a bad you know, etc. Which is why. Uh, you know, Kaw qu has quit Territory Wars for the. I don't know if they're still doing that or they're just playing now or what they're doing. Um, but um, I think that's the challenge for for Capital Games is what can they do? And I'm sure I'm sure they got plans because I feel like something. I still feel like something is brewing. You know, you mm -hmm. don't launch these light speed bundles if something isn't on the horizon. Um, but how do you launch that next game mode without adding 30 minutes to my day when I'm already yeah. spending? Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm, I have three accounts, so I don't want to talk about how much time I'm spending doing this game. But, um, you know, that's <laughs> it. But without adding, well, it was nice knowing you. Account, <laughs> yeah. About that. Yeah. It's yeah. No. A lot. Yeah, th that's why I said something would have to go on the other end, because as much as I want to believe also that we could, that not we, but everyone could convince each other that you don't have to complete every event that just doesn't really work. I mean, people by nature, we want to complete those events. And even if we willfully choose not to go for the red crate here or there, it still creates that sense inside you that, oh, I wish I had the time and that resentment and regret. So yeah, it's, it's kind of tough, but I, I, I know why the, 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 the complex system in my head is never going to happen is because CG, I just simply don't think they have the technical wherewithal to make that function. I mean, I can just, I can just see all the bugs flying out of that one. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, I don't want to go down that road, even though I brought the door, open the door. So let's talk about tomorrow. Tomorrow, stuff's happening. Yeah, a lot of stuff's happening. Well, oh, is it the new raid there? coming out today or is it tomorrow? Well, uh, well, okay. Yeah, see, I'm in well, China. Well, the, these it's difficult tomorrow. questions I'm yeah. posing. <laughs> I mean, technically, it's coming out today, but I don't think anyone's going to have tickets to launch it right away. Right. Because you yeah. need 180, which is more than your cap. Yes. <laughs> is it using yeah. new raid tickets yeah. like you have to start from scratch on that? I haven't, no. I haven't looked. No. You, well, no, I don't think so. Well, it's the same raid tickets. They're not giving us any. They, they have said... You know, like in the past, whenever they launch a new raid, they're like, oh, everyone gets full cap of tickets and you can launch it right away. They're not doing that. So whatever you have is is what you're getting going into this update. Um, but they have to increase the cap because the guild cap right now is 150,000, uh, but it's going to cost 180,000 to launch. So they're going to have to increase it to 210 will be the new cap. Um but even if you're sitting at 150,000 tickets right now, you once your guild resets, you have to have the 30,000, have your guild reset, and then you can launch the the new raid. Spoken like a guild officer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are an officer, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, like I know for us. As of yesterday, I think we had 146,000 oh, as of the reset. Okay. So we'll get the other 30 tonight and then we'll have to wait till tomorrow night's reset. After that, we can launch it. Right. Yeah, I have no idea where my guilds are on it, but I know that I know that collectively most of the players are really eager just for a change. Whether the raid mm -hmm. turns out to be better or not, we are just really tired of the three-day cadence of the crate raid uh, and just really <clears throat> just tired of it, right? I mean, I, yeah. Nuge, I can't imagine on three accounts hitting the raid. Oh. It, it really must feel like epic deja vu. Like, Well, one of them is HSTR, and I don't really do any damage in there anyway, okay. so it's really only two accounts. <laughs> but yeah, it, okay. it goes back to the same conversation, right? The quality of life. Can you launch a new event and have it, have it fit? I like the idea of new raids every eight to nine months, and I like the idea that they're leaving mm -hmm. great raid open, even though you can't get the same rewards from it. Um, and I know everybody's like, oh, I'm not going to like this video game style. It's like, well, let's just play it. Let's just see what happens. I mean, what's the worst? You're going to play it once a week. Um, 
And every time anything changes anywhere, people freak out. There's just no getting yeah. around it. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, change is hard. Yeah, I think I, I pointed out in a, in a recent video of ours, which I said, like, the game literally is a game. It, it's video games in a game, right? You're playing yeah. on hollow tables in a cantina. Mm -hmm. So, like, this, whether it's a side-scrolling speeder bike or it's in the Leia event, I'm actually quite happy for a change of perspective. Mm -hmm. I, I think that 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 diversity helps maintain um, interest in it because if everything just remains side, you know, back and forth, five v five, three v three, then it's just it's it's just eventually boring no matter what. I think other than just the love of the characters. So I, I really look forward to it. I, I'm excited about the the change of pace, uh, the the speed of it. I'm excited about using different characters. Um, I, I can't wait to see what C-3PO looks like on a speeder bike. Um, <laughs> I, I, mean, I just, I, I just don't see that one. Um, <laughs> it's gonna, it's gonna be interesting to see how that looks. I mean, the rest of them you can kind of picture from the movies, right? Um, uh, we we saw troopers, we saw rebels, we saw Ewoks, right. but. I, C-3PO is going to be weird. I mean, I don't even know if his body bends that way. I'm not sure it was supposed <laughs> to, think, at least. I think it's a really but, great point, and I hadn't thought about it. It's just keeping... Um, if you really want to add some some different gameplay to the game and make it so there's something different, whether people love it or not, it's something... It, it, it's not the, you know, 5v5, turn, 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 turn. It's something completely mm -hmm. different. And I want him to... I, I want you know we all talk about the Death Star raid. Maybe eventually, maybe possibly some point, Red Five, maybe Death Star yeah. raid. You know, I want I want them to, if they do that, give me that um, original from my generation. Sit in a box Star Wars game where you fly down the trench. I love that thing with just yes. the the, the, li the green lines and green lines. towers. And so I want that. That give me that, man. Mm -hmm. Well, that's actually a good point because a lot of us have been asking for a Death Star raid. Like that's something that's everyone's really mm -hmm. wanted and this opens up the door for them to do that eventually i mean yeah I, uh, they're not really taking it away when a new raid comes out but it would kind of feel like they took it away if you were in a top end guild and they're like all right no more death star raid you gotta go do whatever endor or something well maybe if they do a death star raid you can play as empire and try to shoot down luke wouldn't that be fun no that's Evil. Um, <laughs> all right. So dark. <laughs> ah, well, uh, yeah, I you gotta have now. a little fun with it. So, <laughs> so um, the 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 indoor raid. I mean, we got some information about it the other day, and and I think I think there was a lot to digest in it. But honestly, it felt like to me it just opened a lot more questions. Like, did yeah. did either of you see? I maybe I missed it. But they said there, there are eight abilities, and they tell us who has those abilities. Like C-3PO mm -hmm. I mentioned, he only has one special, and all of those specials are repeated somewhere, with one exception. Gia Leia has, has an ultimate, mm -hmm. um, so she's got the most attacks. And then uh, Logre, Akbar, and I can't remember who the other one is, but there's another one. That they're, they're the only three characters that have, um, I think, jam the comm signals. So did did you guys see anywhere that explained what these abilities do? I, I couldn't find that. No, I didn't. I, I was going through it um, last night, reading it again, because it was word vomit upon word vomit. Um, yes. And I could not find anything that explained what it does. Um I mean, and then like on like you, you've got the abilities listed, like you said, but then they've also got like the faction abilities and uh, uh, right. stat reworks, like all that's in there, but nothing actually says what it does. And it was kind of confusing because then you're reading the faction abilities and they're talking about jam and timber and all this stuff, and I'm like, yeah, I'm like, okay, but like, where is the info on this, like? Uh, so I'm hoping it will come in the post today, but I'm see we might just have to look in game. You guys are much <laughs> more analytically than you know. I just want to get in there and push buttons and play. I you know it's like I I, I skim the uh, I skim the announcements like okay cool look at some cool little abilities and then I just want to get in there and and push some buttons and like with the um 
like the Lay Organa Ultimate, of, or not Ultimate, the, the event with the speeder bike level. Like, mm -hmm. I was just pushing stuff, and it didn't matter. You know, they didn't make, you couldn't lose that. Yeah. Event. I don't think you could. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you could. I don't know. But, but um, yeah. You, even that tier, though, I was looking at it in game, like, what are these? Do. It doesn't even explain it in game, and I was like, I no. guess I'm just gonna button mash. Uh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There, there's, there's. I so I, I was just talking about that yesterday. There's sideswipe, distract, and damage, mm -hmm. and I. It, it seems to be. It does like it doesn't tell you how many stacks you need of no. each of those three to defeat them, and so like the second special applies. Uh, 10 stacks total if you get two enemies whereas the basic applied i think four to a single target so it's like if you do third grade math you want to do the specials but it does different amounts of each of those three side swipe damage or whatever so it's like well do you win if you get 40 damage or 20 side swipes right you need to know and i'm that's my worry about the raid tomorrow is that is like is it literally just you you just like just try to get whatever button gives you the most stacks of of whatever right mm -hmm. and, and there's so many it's it's stackville right like we we've got so um, oh yeah yeah well, so we've got damage distract sideswipe timber jam evade um uh shield stacks of shield mm -hmm. right so I there's forgot about there's, shields yeah uh, and and they can't like I was reading like the the granted ability for imperial for the the, the imperials here says like this character starts the battle with five stacks of jam when the character uses a basic they remove a bonus stack of damage wait a second they remove a bonus stack I'm like what what is that what does that mean that they get one and then take it away instantly I mean otherwise why is that a bonus stack and then to target. They remove a bonus stack of damage to target equal to the number of stacks of evade. And then the character loses all stacks of evade. And I'm just. Right. This is why I don't read stuff anymore. <laughs> it's so. <laughs> I, I so like when it came out, I like skimmed through it and I read it and I looked at it and I was like, I have a migraine. I can't, I can't read this right now. Like I just yeah, can't. Yeah. And I went back and I read it again and I was like, this still is gibberish like yeah so i i think it's just going to come down to playing it just it plain does. and simple just play mm -hmm. it and and I, I saw a lot of people talking about the need already they're saying to mod remod for it i don't think so oh no way um and i yeah and i don't think it's worth the time honestly i think that when when this thing actually happens i think it's going to be for most guilds they're going to i think points are going to be easier to accumulate than the crate rate because i feel like more guilds are going to have Imper a, a couple Imperial Troopers ready to go, a mm -hmm. CLS squad ready to go, and then any guild who's been chasing or anybody who's been chasing Leia is going to have three Ewoks ready to go. So it's like, I think by default, almost out the door, I think the vast number of players are going to have at least three to five viable squads. Well, Just what I was reading too is a lot of this is gonna it sounds like a lot of it is going to be mix and matching I you think what? you're right mix and matching so you're not gonna oh, necessarily yeah, go right. in with your like CLS squad you might take CLS and low gray and, and Akbar or, or Piet or whoever um I, I don't know about the modding I I'm curious and I know um my officer group has kind of talked about this a little bit but we kind of want to go in without remodding and see what happens uh, with yeah. our scores first. Um, but Same. like the the modifiers or whatever you want to call them for the mods just seems so ridiculous. Like like to remove timber is that Ewoks? I think it's Ewoks that remove timber, right? Uh, it, would make uh, sense that Ewok to... would remove timber in my head. I think Ewok, and then I think yes, Beaver, yeah, and they I remove a stack of timber. So timber, <laughs> but according to their little lovely little uh, chart, in order to do more of that, you would want physical crit avoidance. So, do you want that on Ewoks that are already doing that, or do you want that on like CLS that's not removing timber? Because then. 
You know, I yeah. talked last Confusing. Week. I'm sorry, Gerald. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no. T- take it away. Uh, real quick, I just shared in Discord a, new, uh, a little Excel sheet that I threw together okay. that's, that sorts the characters by faction and then the most common to least common ability. So you can kind of see here, like how, like Sarah's saying, mm-hmm. it's probably going to be a mixed match because, for example, none of the Imperial Troopers have access to the Open Fire, Forest Friends, Hasty Repair, or Jam Their Comlink abilities. So mm-hmm. if you need one of those four abilities, Troopers ain't going to do it for you. Conversely, like Ewoks have no access to Divert Attention, but they have everything else. Um, and yeah. then Rebels have everything but in limited numbers so yeah i think you're gonna have to Mix spread it around but, right you're yeah and so they're like if the, you want to have yeah. all the abilities on a team you might need to have an ewok with a rebel with an, an imperial that could be you know that could be fun so yeah just like in the movies <laughs> totally 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 I, I yeah it's i i agree it's gonna come down to us playing it and banging our heads against the wall i just don't want to remod my, you know, my thought process yeah. is on the raid, and, and I've, I've mentioned several times on the channel, is, you know, my guild is at 350 million, and we do the 25 million crate right now, which is the, not the base level crate, but it's the base level crate until you really start to open it up into more higher tier level, and you get, you know, the rewards we get were okay. The, the payoffs for going higher, and I think somebody told me that Calvin did the math on it, which, of course, mm-hmm. he did, because you guys... I feel like uh, I'm definitely on the on the dumber range of, of creators here, but um, the um, no, I don't do the, any uh, math. Yeah, thank you. I, I was fishing for that. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, so <laughs> the um, the payoff for my guild, like if we were really wanted to get those higher crates, we'd have to really dial in, sacrifice a bunch of other farming, require people to farm the stuff. You know, take your Jedi mm-hmm. Revan to Relic Nine, etc. And when you sacrifice all that, and you're not the payoff over time really isn't there because you're getting more of the Mark Three currency, which is nice, but it doesn't quite. If you're sitting there with a Gear Twelve uh, Zalbar or something, it just doesn't mm-hmm. quite measure up. Yeah. And so I really feel like outside of the top like five to ten percent of guilds, everybody else is just gonna play this, and they're not. We're mm-hmm. not gonna be remodding. We're not gonna be. You know, farming for the and, and I think you know, we've all agree that the characters in this raid are pretty widely owned across the board. Most right. of them. Yes. You know, you've got Nisa in there who's only in the Le- Le- Leia farm, but er- almost everybody has Ewoks at an early point of the game to get three PO. Everybody's got the CLS team. You've got the Imperial mm-hmm. Troopers, so these are pretty widely owned teams. I think that the vast majority of guilds, like probably ninety percent plus of guilds, are just going to go in there. And play it, especially the first time. See what you can do, and then find a way to get to that 25 million crate if that's still the thing, you know. And mm-hmm. get it unlocked, and then move on with our lives. And then the top 10% are going to be breaking their backs to remod and get the max Oof. max rewards out of it, um, which is kind of yep. an interesting dynamic in itself, right there. It, oh. Yeah, that's kind of fun to watch. But yeah, I think you're right, and I think that's a great thing though, because the game should just be open play and joy. I mean, that's how a game should be. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As Jerry yeah. fiddles while anyway. the top fields <laughs> burn. It, it, yeah. I'm sitting here in the background going, oh, man, I got to save that loadout for this mod race. <laughs> uh, I, won't, I, I won't be remodding. Uh, no, that's not true. I will for the first couple runs because I'll, of course, want to record some videos and maybe post something. Mm-hmm. But after I get the novelty of it off, I'm done with it. Like I got my job was in the crate raid. I almost got a million damage. And I know there are people or points. I know there are probably people that have beat it at the 1.2 or 1.8 million, whatever. But I was trying just to get to a million and I was modding them every way. You know, what does max speed do? What does max health do? And that that was fun for like three attempts. Right. And then afterwards, I was like, never again. I am done. So uh- it was like even even with the mall mandos team in the crate raid i built a loadout i got the turn order right and then i I did it like i don't know four times and then i was like i don't really want to do this anymore Mm. i'll just go in with their default mods and it's a it's a lower score but it's not pushing me it's not hurting me anywhere i'm like right i don't don't care enough to to do this so i think it's gonna be the same with this where i'm like 
How yeah. can I get away with this team? Totally. Okay. What about IG12? Yes, 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 or no, no, no? Yes, yes. and no. Maybe? What? <laughs> no. I, I am slightly disappointed in one thing with IG12. Okay. He should have the unaligned force user tag. I totally agree with that. I agree with that. And he, and he doesn't. And I'm, I, I'm just slightly disappointed that he doesn't. Um, I don't know if that would have broken like the game or anything with his kit. But other than that, yay. Well, and I almost question whether he should be neutral. Oh. I feel like there should be a lot of neutral. I mean, Wampa should be neutral. There, there, there should probably we could probably go through. Yep. It. That might be just a video to make who should be neutral. <laughs> Hold on a second. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> Taking some notes right there. Yeah. Who should be neutral? Yeah, I mean you're right. I mean, <laughs> Jawa should be neutral probably. Tuskins, Ewoks, Wampa. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you're right. I and I I wish really wish CG would bring in more neutral tags for the characters. Um, I think it opens a lot more possibilities. Um, but yeah, I mean I, I think I think Grogu. I think he should be neutral. I mean like he's literally eating some poor lady's babies in one episode or two episodes i mean like he's just like ooh, yummy yeah I mean, they're eggs but they literally are her offspring and mm -hmm. the species is on the ver verge of extinction and he's all like i don't care yummy yeah so, I mean, thanks for like, dessert yeah he's 50 he's old enough to know the difference yeah. right so so he does what he wants um and he steals fruit when he wants you know mm -hmm. he he kind yeah. of uh, especially in, in the IG-12 suit, so it kind of makes me think of, like, a toddler. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, this guy's just with, doing whatever he wants. With power armor. Yeah, exactly. Uh, oh, so. Yeah. I mean, he's clearly meant as a healer and somebody to, to elevate the, the Mandalorians. And, and maybe they have Bam and all the... I got it up on the screen. Bam and all the mm -hmm. animatics. So maybe animatics? Animat... Animatronics and no, no, no. animations, no. Um, animations. Animation. That's it. Wow, animatics. Let's go with animations. Yeah. Um. So they may be looking at him as you know. Let's get make Bam make make Bam great again. I guess. Uh. So. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but Bam is Bam. great. <laughs> Was he great at all? Yeah, beats. Uh, anyway. Um. <laughs> sorry, I'm delving into a different conversation completely. <laughs> So I mean, yeah, it, it seems like they're because the the Mandalorians are they're I don't know if they're fluffy like when they spread that taunt around it can be pretty difficult. But if you put a healer out there, um, yeah, maybe it, I'm sure it'll elevate some team somewhere, right? Oh, definitely. Yeah, and I think with Paz especially, it's already starting to build a really really solid team. I one I will not be wailing on or farming after mm -hmm. um leia brink broke my bank for game spending mm -hmm. um i would love to but yeah i'm not going that route right now you know one thing i will say already about ig12 is i absolutely love the 2d graphic the the you know the artwork of him oh, yeah. in the suit holding the fruit mm -hmm. i i don't know why cg doesn't release these as like wallpapers that you can save for your computer or your phone or something because that one right there, that one in particular, and then some of the Inquisitor ones, I would love to have those as a wallpaper. Um, and it's just free advertising for you, CG. Do that. Yeah, Give us five the bucks. People would buy that. Oh, dude, you just went there. Don't think <laughs> monetization. No, see, that is a pure sign of intelligence. Or you're like, whoa, capital <laughs> opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> oh, geez. Sell it. Oh man! Yeah, for sure. But yeah, I like his animation where he does the little full torso spin and sprays the gas out to heal. Mm -hmm. Like his legs don't move, uh, so that's kind of a cool little, I don't know, feat there. I think it, I think it looks cool. I couldn't tell you what the kits do yet. I I love the names. Um, oh man! The, the kit names. Spoiler: If anyone hasn't read it right now, the basic I think is no. Mm -hmm. The special one is yes. Mm -hmm. Special two is no, no, no. <laughs> and then and then when you read the kit, I know that there's references to those, I think, at some point, right? So it's there like is. if yes, 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 or then no, the, no, no. <laughs> the the unique yes, 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 
references no yes no 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 like it's just uh it, it i almost feel like um uh, this is where my brain immediately goes with this is having like streamed with people and, and walked them through events like cam or i've done a couple like uh territory yeah. battle streams or territory war streams or whatever the case may be having to walk somebody through using this character would be a nightmare just reading the <laughs> abilities like, no no wait i mean yeah wait yeah. no uh yes i can already see that problem like you would have to like <laughs> mentally train yourself and actively train your brain to be like basic special correct on the special like <laughs> it'd be the who's avoid first. pressing yeah. that button yeah <laughs> uh, oh man okay so he's got he's got two specials and a unique okay mm -hmm. um have you all read the kits like i said i don't read kits anymore man i just i can't nope. do it i skimmed it <laughs> Skimmed it, yeah. Skimmed, skimmed it, yeah. I'm skimming it right now Does, while so you're talking. Yeah, yeah I, I am too. So I'm looking uh, for the Omicron. TW. Um, uh, okay. Uh, oh, well. I'm starting to enjoy TW a little bit more because um, I've just been placing some oddball off meta teams and seeing what they do. Mm -hmm. But I don't enjoy playing, like, actually the battles of TW because it's just... Again, there's hey look, forty eight Jabas. Right. Um Yep. So while in territory war, the first time each ally lights like Mandalorian loses all protection, IG twelve gains a bonus turn, and the cooldown of no 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 is reset. Call an additional ally other call an additional other ally. Excuse me. They really need to work on some grammar. Call an additional other ally whenever ig12 uses a sp oh, okay so it's referencing the previous ability so he's going to call two allies to assist now and then yes assisting allies deal 10 percent more yeah i see that there's already some confusion there sarah so yeah so in the territory war omicron the ability called yes will get a bonus and the ability called no gets in a no 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 gets in a okay Ooh. you know what let's move on yeah looks like it's gonna be a yes, yes, yes. <laughs> All right, how are we doing on time? Oh, we got uh, we we got about ten minutes left, so we get one final topic for us. All right, I have ten minutes. I don't know about okay, you guys. Okay, well, we did ask Sarah to mm -hmm. we asked Sarah to prepare. With oh, last yes. episode, we had yeah, we had on Fatville, and we went through um, our takes on the the top, well, just the ordering of preference or likability, perhaps, of all the Star Wars feature films. Uh, the the nine in the uh, Skywalker saga plus Solo and Rogue One. We did not mm -hmm. include the holiday special or the Ewoks or any of the other nonsense out there. Mm -hmm. So, just the basic eleven. Yes. Are you willing to reveal your your list? I am. I already know I'm going to make people mad. <laughs> oh, inevitable. Gerbil already inevitable did that. Dorn. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. So, do so you want go... me to go worst to favorite or or yeah, yeah bottom to top? But All right. Go for so, it. So, number 11. Number 11. Do, should I add like a like a, a preface to this list or just go for it? Just go. All right. Go for it. I I added one got me in trouble, so go for it. Okay. Least least favorite number 11. Attack of the Clones. That's fair. Okay. It's just it's just big big math <laughs> yeah i agree totally agree with you <laughs> I, I had that in the bottom three or four i can't yeah. argue with that uh number 10 phantom menace Ooh. now there's one that yeah, yeah over time people have fallen more in love with that movie so i know i know the only the only good thing on the phantom menace and this is the only reason why it's not number 11 for me is the mall fight scene yeah, I was saying I love the music. I, yeah. I love that music. Yeah, I just, I can't get past the Padme Anakin. It's just, no, this doesn't. Right get, there with mm -mm. you. Mm -mm. Yeah, and Fat Bill was trying to point out last time that that she's 14 and I think he's nine or something. So there's right. there's not a huge age difference, but 
at that point in your life, that's a huge age difference. Uh, and I, I agree with you. I just, I couldn't get into that growing up. Yeah. It's, and still, yeah. still can't. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Uh, so All right. Okay. Shouldn't surprise you. Number nine is Revenge of the Sith. <laughs> could tell i'm not a prequel fan wow she just smoked it right there uh i am um, yeah yeah i am um, yeah super not a prequel fan i don't like them so wait what is interesting. it wh wh what is it is it the the hokey scripts that really get you or what is it i just so i am what you would call like a, a star wars late bloomer um and i just I watched them and I was like, this is brutal. Like Anakin is kind of whiny. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> he's also kind of like creepily obsessed with Padme. I'm like, can you just <laughs> chill? <laughs> like, can you go away? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I am he, right there with you. He's a big time simp. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what's wrong with you? Like there's, there, there are some things that are cool. Like the, the mall fight scene is cool. General Kenobi and, and Grievous is cool. Like uh, Dooku. I, I like seeing Dooku, but otherwise I'm like, eh, Palpatine is kind of like lame. He kind <laughs> this is the best <laughs> video ever. <laughs> I'm going to make so many enemies. He's just so like, no, he's like your, I, I feel like he would be like a big Wall Street CEO that everyone just hated, but also just didn't, you know, have that much power. Or, or maybe like a politician that everybody hated, maybe? Like, he just seems power hungry without actually being able to obtain the power and needs to manipulate his way to i don't know i just can't i can't do it hey uh for everybody out there just uh, uh feel free to comment we'd love to hear your comments on the, on the video uh all right. I, so i will say i did not watch a single like when i say malay boomer i didn't watch a single star wars movie until i was in my mid-20s oh wow um so like i okay. i i'm a <laughs> Yeah, so I, I watched these movies and I didn't watch them. I know people who make the mistake and watch them in like chronological, like prequel number order, like episode order, not mm -hmm. actual release order. And I didn't do that. I watched them in release order. So I watched the prequels after watching the original trilogy um, and watching the prequels in your mid 20s. I was like, this is just not, it's not doing it for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so number eight. Okay, okay, Ooh, yeah, God. number eight. I would say number eight is The Last Jedi. Uh, okay. I I was, I, I think the story is just flat. It's, uh, I can see what they're trying to do and trying to deviate from what you would expect, but it just didn't work, sadly. So, okay, th th I'm really going to show how bad I am with the, mm -hmm. the sequels here. I don't mm -hmm. even know the proper names for them in order. So the last Jedi is number uh, Eight. nine. It's the last one, right? Yeah. No. See, there you go. Yeah. So that heck, that's the that's, space fuel one, right? That's the Canto that's Bite. Fuel. Yeah. Casino yeah, yeah. planet. Yeah. It's the yeah, one yeah. that, that yeah, so everyone it, gave Rose so much crap for. Um, yeah. Which I feel see, a to, little bit bad. To, yeah, I think I th actually I really liked her character in the seventh one. So uh, in the was yeah. it a New Hope remake, mm -hmm. uh, Space yeah. Fuel, and then We Can't Go Up. That's how I think of those three movies, right? Um, <laughs> Space Fuel <laughs> and We Can't Go Up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The whole new yeah. fleet of super, super Star Destroyers. Mm -hmm. It's like none of y'all don't I mean, just go up, right? Mm -hmm. Get out, disperse from the battle. <laughs> nah, they can't do that. They, they need somebody no, to tell them directions. One thing. And, if, they, if you pull yeah. up the one thing, it all collapses. That's really smart you know, yeah, exactly. uh, military strategy. <laughs> oh, bad. Yeah. But I agree. I think Rose got... She I think got... both the actress who played yes. her and the character yes. both got decimated unfairly. Yes, now the, I agree. No, the character sucks. Oh, man. I, I, I think the character was pretty pivotal <laughs> for Finn. For Finn's character. Yeah. Uh, but otherwise, I'm like... I just feel I just feel bad. I, anyway, moving on. Um, All right, number seven. Number seven is the rise of Skywalker. So that's the last one, Gerbil, episode yeah, nine. Okay. Um, Thank you. 
it's just cheesy. It's a cheesy wrap up. Yeah. Um, yeah, it is. Again, comments like they are literally pull together. Anyone? <laughs> oh no, they they like Exegol is this place that nobody's been able to find for millennia, right? And yet, mm -hmm. all of a sudden, fifteen thousand ships are suddenly rallied like that from all over the galaxy to instantly go help. Uh, no, no, no. I I almost feel like I would have. Maybe this is a hot take, but I almost feel like I would have liked it better if Ben hadn't redeemed himself. Mm. If Finn had a what? If Ben hadn't redeemed himself. Oh yeah, oh, I there's so many things that they messed up with that. I mean, it's just it, it's like an endless list. I mean, Finn has no story ever. Poe has no story ever. Anyway, sorry, I'll stop. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Um, well, when 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 Ben was thrown off that cliff, I knew that it, that was not the end. I was like, oh, Maul returned, Palpatine right. returned. That's nothing. We don't mm -hmm. die from falling in Star Wars. <laughs> okay, number six. Um, Return of the Jedi. Solo has <laughs> not been named yet, everybody. Just we're we're still holding on Solo. Sorry, I kind of went into shock right there. <laughs> uh, that was not what I was expecting. <laughs> um, <laughs> hang on, I have an instant headache. You know Return there are the... Ewoks in Return of the Jedi, right? Uh, yeah, I realized after I said that. I mean... I realized... <laughs> no, I put I put that on my number one, and it's not just the Ewoks. It is, but um, yeah, yeah. Nuge uh. and Phil looked at me like I was nuts when I didn't make that number one, but you just threw it to number six, or when I did put it at one. But yeah. okay, six, yeah. All right, yeah. I'm calming down. You're having like a hot flash over there. Oh man, I did. I turned bright red. I, I was watching. I was like, dude, I'm I'm redder than Nucha's sweater right now, but okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. I, I have to hear this. Th Why? There, there are memorable moments, but like out, out of the original trilogy, it's probably the least memorable for me. She's right. Okay. Um, like the Ewoks are in there, C3PO's their god. Mm. Jabba's in there. Cool. Like, <laughs> look, what what she's the, saying right now is how people felt when it came out, right? The, and, the only other yeah. thing that's in there that actually wowed me, and, and uh, that that's the one where Luke and Leia realize they are twins. Correct. Mm. I was I blend the three together. Um, that's the only other thing that in the trilogy that that actually is the only thing in the trilogy that did not. Uh, or that did surprise me. Like I knew the Darth Vader, I am your father uh, twist. That was the twist. I was like, what? Like, really? And then I was like, this is such a cheesy little cop out. Like, why would you, why would you make them brother and sister? And I, I remember getting so mad when I watched it. <laughs> um, and it, uh, I just, when, when I think of, like, throwing on a Star Wars movie, Return of the Jedi is never one I think of to put on unless I'm actively sitting there and watching them all in order. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, okay I watched I... Empire Strikes Back. I need to watch Return of the Jedi next. Okay. I, th I think that's fair, um, especially given <laughs> when you watched it. Um, no, 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 because what I mean what I mean is, is quite a legitimate point that when A New Hope and mm -hmm. the the original trilogy all premiered other than television star trek uh and a few real low budget sh uh, other shows there was nothing like it it was absolutely yeah. original and also screen resolution was crap back then yeah I mean, you're, you're talking like three four hundred pixels for the entire screen right so like the the quality of the makeup and the lips and things of the the ewoks by today's mm -hmm. standard is just bad i agree they it mm -hmm. doesn't look appealing but on the big screen theater back then it would have been completely original and it looked better for its time so i think like if you watched it at those back then they were more in, enthralling than they are today speaking, we have so much broader like speaking of range who of... watched it back then let's let's chill out on the uh, back then <laughs> conversation let's let's back take it then. easy a little bit here all right, all right, all right. All right. Sarah, what's number, let's go, five. let's go. What's what's number five? Solo. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I lower actually, on my list. I didn't like it. 
I didn't. I liked Solo. I liked seeing the story. I uh, I actually honestly wish we got a sequel to it because I would have liked to oh, see yeah. Yeah. more with like Kira working with Maul. Um, like I yes. thought that would have really opened the door to a sequel, and I'm kind of disappointed we didn't get one. Yeah, I, I think everybody was waiting for that. Mm -hmm. like, whether you like the show or not, I think lots of people were waiting for that sequel. Mm -hmm. I think so, it's true that Solo really suffered from Last Jedi, and um, and and it was yes, yeah, it was really the first time Disney yes. stepped up and said we're going to make a ton of content back to back to back, and people were like, well, eh, maybe not so much. But I I like it too. It's a little pandering, but I like it a lot. Mm -hmm. It's a fun movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, right. so four would be A New Hope. Okay, I'm confused now. I I like that we get everyone. Like this is like a good introductory film. Um, Luke is not my favorite character. I think he's just whiny, and this is a lot of Luke. Luke and Anakin are like the same character, except one is good and one is evil. <laughs> like they are super. Whiny. I saved them. I saved them all. And I'm not just talking the men and the women, but I saved the children too. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I mean, in, in sense of like whiny level. I'm whiny. so glad you're here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Luke is not my favorite character. <laughs> He's not my favorite character. And this is a good introduction film to the trilogy. But otherwise, like other than it being an introduction, that's really all it is. I think it's the most dated of okay. all the movies. Like they, you know, the, the, it was a shoestring <laughs> budget, and they were mm -hmm. throwing together mm -hmm. as they went, and yeah, like okay, so a new hope. We we meet Luke. He's on Tatooine. We meet Leia. We meet like the characters. That's great. Luke destroys the Death Star. End of, of movie. <laughs> well, it, you know, they rescue princess yeah, okay, from okay. from Death Star. I mean. Uh, that's Next. funny. See, I was pointing out last time, like, <laughs> Luke's all crying and whining about Ben dying, but when his aunt and uncle who raised him die, he's just like, oh, well, I'll, I'll scream and move on. Yeah. <laughs> Burned alive, by the way. Ugh. Exactly. All right, number three. Uh, Empire Strikes Back. Wow. Yeah. Whoa. Wow. So hold on. We're, okay. We, we haven't done Force Awakens yet. I'm, this is great. Yeah. I love this. This is tremendous. Oh. Uh, Empire Strikes oh. Back is one of the best, ar arguably one of the best Star Wars movies. Arguably. Yeah. Like, it, it has to be up there. That's your whole thing? <laughs> but, like, no, but you, you get, like, you, we've gotten everyone introduced, and now we've got, um, like, the whole, it's, it's almost like you get the whole playground opened up to you in a way like you've got you've already met the characters you're continuing the story you get a ton of iconic lines and iconic scenes in this movie um mm -hmm. i find that this one is a lot more uh action packed like i feel like there's more going on in empire strikes back um which is why yeah. i like it more yeah and and also when it premiered like the good guys didn't win Right? right, and you never did right. that in TV and movies back then. The good guys lost the whole way through the movie; they're getting their butt kicked. Mm -hmm. So, okay, all right. Okay. So, I, I, I'm drawing a blank. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, two. We cut episode seven mm -hmm. and number two. Rogue One is in there. Okay, yeah, all Rogue right. One and, and, yeah, that's we're waiting on Rogue mm -hmm. One and Force Awakens. All right, so what's, what's number two? Okay, number two, number two is two? the Force Awakens. Nice. Um, oh yeah, good. Okay. So good. I, I like. This to me, it is essentially a New Hope remade, which doesn't bother yeah. me. Um, to me, I love the characters. Having Ray as the lead was amazing. Like I can count on one hand how many shows and movies I watched growing up where it was the female lead character and not a male. Mm -hmm. um, so having her there as as the main, you know, clearly she's a Jedi or or force sensitive whatever you want to call it at that point um that was really good Plus, also like bb8's in there like come on i've been telling people that there's a group of there's a generate you're not part of the generation but there's a group of people <laughs> coming up behind everybody that's going to love the sequels and everybody's going to freak out and they all tell me i'm crazy but i think there's people that love the sequels 
Uh, I, 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 I will say with the sequels, the one thing I wish is having had like one person oversee all three yeah. instead of having yes. it go back and forth. Yes. Yeah. But I also yes. love the mindset of like, <laughs> I know not everyone likes all the Star Wars content and people are like, oh, Endor sucked or Andor sucked and Kenobi sucked and like all like, I, I like it all. I'm like, you know what? We're getting all new content. You don't have to watch it all. Yes, there's content that's better than yes. some, but you don't have to Amen. watch it all. And content is better than no content. So, yeah. yes, I totally agree. Like, you know, the, 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 default response is Disney Star Wars sucks. I hear it so much mm -hmm. from a lot of die die hard fans. And mm -hmm. and I and I just like every time I hear that, I just have to stop and be like, are you are you serious? Because pre Disney we had Caravan of Courage or whatever it was. We had the holiday Star Wars special. I'm sorry, other than the original trilogy, pre Disney, if you actually go look at all the release dates, there was not much happening that was liked at its time of release. Mm -hmm. Post, now that we have the Disney series, the the highest rated Clone Wars are the Disney Clone Wars, the last episode season, right? The um, and then you're right, just the 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 explosion of content, Andor and Kenobi, and and I am so excited about upcoming Skeleton Crew, mm -hmm. Acolyte. There is some cool, cool stuff coming, and if it wasn't for that cash cow you wouldn't have any of that yeah yeah so all right yep. so let's talk about Good. rogue one okay rogue yeah. one number one like this is if i want to watch a star wars movie <laughs> rogue one goes on like it is fully encaptured start to finish you, like the whole story is told um it it's got like the perfect balance in my opinion maybe a little bit slightly too skewed but the perfect balance of like humor and seriousness and just absolute heart like i remember watching that and at the end realizing i was like oh my god like you know what the you know what the outcome is gonna be before you watch it but also mm -hmm. you're watching it and you're realizing they're all gonna die like yeah like that was so heartbreaking and the war i don't want to say like the worst moment of the movie but like I remember realizing that and just being absolutely gutted and devastated, but still loving the movie. Like, what movie can you think of or show or whatever where they kill literally everybody and you're still like, wow, that was a great Mars story. Mars Attacks. Walking Dead. <laughs> Walking Dead, I stopped watching like way. About I'm like, okay, seasons, we got yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They did kill everybody. No, you're right. Yeah. yeah. And Rogue just... One is is fabulous. The cinematography too was unbelievable. Yeah. Like the the scene where uh, Darth Vader Star Destroyer jumps yeah. into the system and the Rebel ships literally are crashing into it. That oh. was just so good. It's just there's so much. Like you've got Jin, you've got Cassian. K two S O is hilarious. Like he just adds so much levity, and which is needed because it's it's such a sad ending. But yeah, it's hands down my favorite movie so here's what i love about your list is you you quite literally mm -hmm. it's entertainment value top to bottom like you're not you're not yeah. like lore driven you're not like you know you're not looking at well um anakin you know, I, I just love the fact that you just watched them each for their individual entertainment value and ranked them on that and mm -hmm. that's the way you watch star wars movies um i get really tired of lore discussions yeah. and the way they happen i think it's we it's very uh 1980s star trek reminiscent you know episode five of season two you you touched a woman on the shoulder what did that mean and william shatner's <laughs> like i don't even know what you're talking about you know and i, I think we've gotten into really we're, we're too deep on that kind of stuff and so mm -hmm. i love the i love your list mm -hmm. and i love mm -hmm. that you just took it from a pure entertainment value and how entertained you were and i think that's that's tremendous yeah, thank you. And like, I know a lot of people also are like, oh, plot holes. I'm like, there's plot holes in everything now. Like, you can't escape it. Yes. And you you just gotta, you, you just gotta glaze over it or make your own yeah. explain, explanation up for it in it, your head. <laughs> like, enjoy the space wizards with swords, right? There you go. Right, right. Exactly. So. Well, guys. Yeah. I gotta go wake up the boy for school. So this is this is a lot of fun. I I'm glad I'm really glad to meet you today, Sarah. We never talked before. Thanks. Me too. This was tons of fun. Yeah. 
Yeah, Sarah, tell everyone where they can find you. Oh yeah, um, so you can find me on YouTube at Celiac Sarah. Really straightforward. A lot of conquest-driven content. Um, weekly show with Zareth there as well. Uh, I don't really stream on Twitch. Sometimes I'm hanging out on Twitch, but I don't really stream a lot there. Um, and then obviously on my YouTube, there is a link to my uh, Discord server, which also has a ton of Conquest-related resources in it, along with other things. There's just a ton of chatter in there. Um, and well, I gotta say thank yeah. you a lot for those Conquest videos. Yeah. They are oh, super helpful. They're very, very good. Thank you. I appreciate that. I My biggest goal is for everyone not to have to do Proven Grounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> i think a lot of people appreciate that yeah, so i'm glad they're helpful all right well sarah it was really good to have you gerbil do you have any last words for us oh not really this has been a great episode and i'm i'm, I'm wiped i'm i'm just i'm at a loss all right well there there's a first for everybody gerbil's at a loss yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm at a loss. I think I'm still in shock over number six, Return of the Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you put the Ewoks at number six? Uh, I did not think yeah, this seriously. through when I made my list. Uh. Oh no, it's all it's all good. Yeah, I got the, that's a behind me. If you can see that castle behind that, that's Rogue One. There's a, a big picture of Jin right there, nice. right, right behind that castle. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, everybody. Well, thanks for joining us today. Thanks to Celiac Sarah for coming on board and, uh, and entertaining us. I love that movie list. I thought that was <laughs> tremendous. We will talk to everybody here in a couple weeks. Have a good one. Um, and always, of course, rem remember, Nooch and Gerbil. I got to fix that. And Sarah, too good. Now, Gerbil, you're not on the screen right now. It's only Sarah and me. So, <laughs> Nooch, Gerbil, and Sarah, too good. And I got to fix that screen.